Welcome back. This is Speed at the Bottom of the Helix. You want to see some really cool things you can do with just a few tools from the fast track range? Well, in Appleton, Wisconsin, Kitty has left Kevin back into the workshop to show us safety first. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Speed. And yes, I do have the fire extinguisher next to me, and I do have safety glasses right on the workbench. So we're good to go. Hey, everyone. I'm Kevin Marks from Fast Tracks. And you may have seen me at the National Train Show in the Fast Tracks booth at Train Fest and the O Scale Show in Chicago. And you know how excited I get to talk about track work. So today we're actually going to talk about some new things that we really haven't discussed anywhere on uh, our videos on YouTube. And I'm really excited to show you what we're going to do tonight. So if you want to learn about soldering, that was the last NMRA clinic, and that's posted on the Fast Tracks Facebook page. You can learn how to uh, solder correctly, so I would suggest going there. But today, we are going to show you how to build mainline track, a siding, a crossover, and a ladder track yard, all with just using a turnout fixture. You know, these fixtures have multi-uses, and we're going to show you how you can get everything out of just using a turnout fixture. So you don't need a whole lot of tools to get started. You can literally just start with one fixture and you can build a shelf layout, you can build a yard, and you can actually build a pretty complete railroad just using one turnout fixture. So I'm gonna show you how to optimize that turnout fixture and then we're actually going to get some track down. And by the time we're done, we'll have a double track main line, a crossover, a siding, and then that siding leads into a ladder track yard. So let's talk about track planning first and foremost. When you're thinking about building a shelf layout or any type of yard, you want to look out your turn at your turnout size. So look at the equipment that you have to operate. Typically, if you have four axle diesels or short base steam locomotives, you can go with a smaller turnout number. If you're operating larger steam or more modern diesel, you want to go up uh, in size a little bit. So we have a couple tools that can help you figure out which one is best. So on the site, we have printable track templates and these are free. You can download everything that we make onto a sheet of paper. You can cut it out and you can put them down. You can tack some flex track down with it and you can actually test to see if your equipment will go through the turnout that you're thinking about. But one of the things that I really like to do most is just build things in real size. I'm in O scale and what you think is good in your mind and what looks good on the computer screen, uh, when you actually see it live on your workbench, you realize that you might need to dial things down a little bit. So one of the things I like to do, and I say that a lot, is build what are called these little track skeletons where... I don't have the full point detail. I did not put, or I'm sorry, the frog detail. I did not put the full point detail in it. It literally is just the outline of a turnout. And you can build these right in your turnout fixture, just like this. And then you can extend, if you know that this lead is gonna go a little longer, you can actually extend that out um, from the fixture if you know you want to keep building. But these are great little things to have. So instead of using printable track templates, you're actually using something that is full size. Then if you have any of our sweepsticks that we make, these little buggers are great little tools because then they can slide right into the skeleton that we made. And then you can either uh, continue with flex track or if you want to build some straight track, you can build straight track in the turnout fixture as well. And I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. So these are some great inexpensive ways that you can get some track planning tools and actually see something live. And then you can, uh, like I said, continue with flex track or other track and make sure that your equipment actually runs through before you actually start building. So these you can build easily in the turnout fixture. One thing I will say is you do want to notch the stock rails here first before you put them together. So then when you're done using this as a planning tool, you can actually then continue to build the frog and then add the points and then complete the turnout. And if you do that first, it will make life down the road a whole lot easier and you'll, you'll be thanking yourself for what you did. So you can build that in the turnout fixture. 
the other great thing that I love doing in a turnout fixture is building straight track where I'm just going to get this up nice and close so you can see it. So you can build straight track and then you can build whatever distance you want. You can just keep walking it down and build however uh, long of track that you need. So this is a three foot microengineering section that I did uh, for the demo today. And I built this in the turnout fixture. The other cool thing that not a whole lot of people know about in the turnout fixture is when you look at it, this diverging route is the same angle that you would need to build a siding. I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then we're actually going to get some track down and show you this live. So here's your turnout skeleton in the turnout fixture. Then what you can do is if you actually flip around the turnout fixture, and then when you look inside, um, and when you look at the diverging route from the opposite turnout, that's the same angle that you would need for a siding. So what I did is I soldered up some track that will fit right inside there. And I used a PC tie here on the end. And then these are just brass angle pieces that I soldered on top. And then once you actually see how the turnout hooks up with that, and I'm doing this backwards, so bear with me, you can see that there is your siding right here. So let's actually put this down on the workbench and show you what that looks like. So let's readjust the camera here. And I've got all kinds of good things that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. So here is the turnout that I just showed you. And we're going to hook up some straight track and I'm using sweep sticks. Here's just a little straight track section right here. And then I'm taking this piece that I just showed you in the turnout fixture and we are going to place it down here like this. And I'm just gonna add a couple unsoldered PC ties just to get the track at the same level. And then let's hook this together with some more sweep sticks. So what we wanna do is make sure that our track is parallel to each other. So I'm gonna put in a couple more of these sweep sticks. You can never have enough of these little ones. I absolutely love them. Then here's a tool that we rarely talk about, which is on our site called the Space Gauge. And this tool is adjustable. And there are little nubbies on the bottom that can move back and forth. And these little nubbies will fit in the center section of our sweep sticks. So that way you can maintain proper track spacing when you're laying things up. So these are about uh, three, four, seven dollars. And once you figure out your track spacing, you can actually glue them down in place. And that will ensure that all of your track spacing is the same. And then just take a Sharpie and write it on top of what that track spacing is. So you know how to reference that. So very quickly, we built a siding with our hand laid track. And just to give you a little different view of how that looks, you can see that right here and you can see how the track is perfectly parallel to each other. So that is a neat little way that you can get that angle going into your siding. A lot of times when you use flex track, that little curve with flex track, there's always this little, this little extra bump that you have to take a lot of time to smooth out and literally tack down every tie to make sure that it's going to stay there. But using this method, you can build that curve in your turnout fixture. And that same curve is also used for the last track in a ladder track series. So now what we're going to do, now that you know everything that you can do in a turnout fixture, you can build straight track, you can build skeletons, you can build a left and right turnout, and then you can build this little curve piece right here 
that gives you that angle for a siding or on the ladder track. So the fixtures are pretty versatile and that is really all you need to build a shelf layout or uh, a switching layout. It doesn't take a whole lot and you can do that uh, right at home anytime that you want. So now we're gonna have a whole lot of fun and we're actually going to put together a main line, a crossover and a yard with ladder track. So there, we get a lot of questions about ladder track and you can actually build ladder track in your fixture. And one of the things that you can do when you start planning your layout, you can think about not just the turnout, but what you need to build after the turnout. And one of the examples that I'll show you right here is this piece. So I built, I built the skeleton in the turnout fixture, but then I kept extending that straight track. And this is all one piece. So the turnout fixture it basically looks like this. And then when I'm done, I actually flip it, flip it around. And then you can just continue to walk down that straight track and build whatever length you need. And I will tell you that once you start seeing uh, yard track and siding track that is absolutely perfectly straight, you're going to want to keep doing more of it. And it literally just takes a few minutes to build once you're done with the turnout. So don't think that you just have to build a turnout here. Think about what you're going to do after or before the turnout and see if you can continue building that track all in the same fixture. So let's have some fun and let's actually build something. There are a ton of videos online on their YouTube channel on how to build a turnout. We aren't gonna cover that. If you wanna see how to build a turnout in detail, I would just go right to the YouTube page and we literally walk you through each step on how to build a turnout. If you need to practice some soldering, I mentioned earlier, we did a soldering video before. An expanded version of that video is on the Fast Tracks Facebook page. Uh, just scroll down, we did it two weeks ago, and that will walk you through some proper steps on what to do. So if you've never done it before, or if you're thinking about doing it, I would highly recommend watching that video so you can learn proper soldering techniques. It's a lot like painting. Everything just needs to be clean and you need a lot of heat or proper heat for whatever scale that you're doing. And in terms of cleanliness, I can't stress it enough. If it's not shiny, don't solder it. It's just that easy. Hit it with some sandpaper or a wire wheel and you're good to go. The other thing I'd recommend doing is using acid-based flux. We have that on our website as well versus liquid flux. Acid-based flux is a little more aggressive than a liquid flux or water-based flux, it will give you a stronger joint. Uh, just remember that anytime you solder with acid-based flux when you're done, just scrub whatever you did with some Dawn dishwashing soap to get it off. Otherwise, you could have some corrosion issues that may creep up further down the line, and we don't want that to happen. So highly recommend go back and watch those videos. So now what we're going to do is, is get some track down, and remember, this is O scale, it's pretty big. My work table, just as a point of reference, is two feet by four feet. And we're pretty much going to use all of that. So let's get started. And we're gonna walk you through everything that you need to do. So I'm gonna move the camera and readjust some things here. And we're gonna knock out some pretty cool looking track work that I think you will enjoy very much. So the first thing we want to do, let's get things repositioned here just a little bit. So we are going to put down a main line. So we're just gonna take some straight rail this is a three foot piece that I made with microengineering rail. And the other thing, I'm gonna move the camera back up for a second. So the other kind of disclaimer I wanna make with what we're gonna show you today, everything that we're gonna to do is in mainline tie spacing. 
So when you see a turnout fixture, all turnouts that we make basically have mainline tie spacing, meaning that the tie spacing is much closer together. And that is consistent with what you would see on a class one railroad. So once you get into sidings and branch lines, typically that tie spacing is a little further apart. So if you want to do, if you want to model that, another thing that I would recommend, it's not needed, but if you if you're going to do a lot of track work, another fixture that we make is just a straight track fixture. I'll hold this up so the glare doesn't quite get it. But on here, this is called a combination fixture where we have mainline, branch line, and siding spacing. And you'll see here the top piece is mainline, the middle one is branch line, and you see how that tie is a little bit wider. And then down here you get to the siding and that tie is a little bit wider. If you're gonna lay a lot of track and you wanna use our twist ties, the twist ties that we sell actually match up to the spacing that is on this fixture. So I just wanna throw that out there. If you're gonna do a lot and you wanna use twist ties, I would get one of these and that would make life a whole lot easier. The other thing that you can do is you can actually put turnouts together while you're making them. So if you're gonna make a turnout, but you know the tie spacing after that turnout is going to be branch line or siding tie spacing, you can literally take one fixture, butt it up, and then all the track that you build after the fixture in the, the, the straight track fixture will have the tie spacing that you're looking for. So you can build a lot of track work in place at your workbench and you can build it all together. You know, you don't have to think just building turnouts in this size. Again, think about what you're gonna build after the turnout or before the turnout, and then you can continue to build that track, lay the rail, it'll go across both fixtures. And that way your tie spacing is exactly where you need it to be. But the whole purpose of this demonstration is to show you the flexibility of what you can build with just a turnout fixture. And if you don't have a turnout fixture, you could even build off of the printable tie, pl tie templates that we have. I would still recommend getting some sweep sticks. And then we make this nice little tool called a trifecta track gauge. And we machine these in house. They are extremely precise. I'd recommend getting at least three of these. So that way, whatever you're working on, you have a couple you know, further down the line that are holding everything in place. So you don't need a lot to build your own track. And that's the point we wanna make. A lot of people think that it's hard, it's difficult. It takes a lot of time. I can build a three foot mainline piece of track in less time that it would take me to lay a uh, flex track down and work out all the little squiggles. So if you have time to work out squiggles and flex track, you certainly have time to build your own straight track. And like I said before, once you see perfectly straight track, it's a little addicting and you just want, you just want more. So, all right, so back to the build. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit here so you can see what we did. So first I just have an 18 foot track piece and then I have a three foot track piece. And what we're going to do is use the sweep sticks, the small straight ones, almost as like little rail joiners. And we're gonna fit those right in the middle. So these space gauges, and let's talk about this a little bit more. These space gauges have this little, I'll turn it here so you can see it, have a little nubby coming out the end. And that same nub actually fits right inside the center line of the sweep sticks. So that way you can ensure that your track work is at, is at whatever spacing you, know, you want it to be. So this is adjustable. And then once you figure it out, you can actually glue these together and hold them in place. So here we are. We just put down our first 
move the camera again. Bear with me for a second. It's just me doing this. So we have our first main line um, uh, already down on the workbench. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a second main line. So I have a couple of these track skeletons that I built earlier. And the other full disclosure I will make is I cut everything before this demonstration. So it will all go together exactly how uh, we want it to go together. So we're just going to put, flip these around. We're just going to put these down here like this and just kind of start hooking things together. So whenever you're doing your track, you always want to start where you know you need to turn out and kind of work in the opposite directions. So we're just going to throw down our crossover. And this crossover is just literally two skeletons. And then I just adjusted the spacing between the two so you can do that very easily. So when you, when you kind of do it in this method, you kind of want to reverse engineer everything first. So if you know your track spacing is at a certain angle, get your track spacing right. So we're going to use a couple more of, of uh, these guys. And actually, I'm going to pop this one out. And let's go back. And we're going to use a 10-inch track spacer or I'm sorry, 10 inch sweep sticks. And then we'll kind of do the same on this side. And then we're gonna do a small one right here. And then over on the other side of the turnout, we're going to, uh, let's, put a, let's put a long one in there. So we'll use a 10 inch on this side because we're gonna use facing pieces to connect all the other track that we have. So now that we have our track connected together, all we need to do is our sweep sticks and kind of start matching everything up. So let's start over on this side and we're just going to pop a few of these in place and I've got a bunch of them here and it's always good to have more than what you think you need. So now I know that this track spacing is exactly what needed to be. So now we're gonna to move to the other side of the turnout and I'm gonna grab another 10 inch section right here. And then we're just gonna kind of keep doing this all the way down so you can see just how easy this is to get some good looking track down very quickly. It doesn't take a whole lot. You just need the right tools to do the job, just like anything else. So now that we've done that, here's a little side view of what we did, where we now have a parallel main line going down, and now we're gonna go off into the crossover right here which is going to go on to the siding that is going to be used to work the yard. So now that we have this done, let's add this other turnout to form our crossover. And I'm just gonna throw in a little sweep sticks right here. And then let's put some straight track down right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to use a little longer sweep stick for this one. And then before we go any further, let's make sure that our spacing between these two is accurate. So that looks real good. And then we're going to make sure that the spacing down here is accurate as well. So we'll drop in another 
move the camera here a little bit, another 10 inch sweepstakes, and then we'll throw in another space gauge. So things are starting to come together pretty well. Now what we wanna do is um, start our yard. So before we go any further, let's just take a look at what we did again. So here's our parallel uh, main line. And then right here is our crossover that we made. So this track is going to be the siding track that an engine can use to work the yard so it doesn't foul up the main line. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm keeping all my track spacing consistent just for the sake of demonstration. But once we get into some of that yard track, you'll probably want to tighten it up a little bit so it's a little more prototypical and save space. So let's kind of start our ladder track here. And I'm gonna use this skeleton that I started to extend past the turnout fixture right here. So that way I know my lead is nice and straight. So we are just going to throw that over on this end. And I'm gonna grab a 10 inch sweep stick and pop that in place. And then another space gauge and we're just going to make sure that everything is exactly where it is. So before I go any further, another little track planning tip that I like to do is tape everything down because we are going to actually take all of this off when we're done so you can see the final product. So I'm just using some painters, some blue painters tape that you can get anywhere. And we're just going to throw some of this down and that will hold everything in place. So if you accidentally bump the table while you're doing it, you won't lose all of your work. And if you don't have as many sweep sticks and space gauges as I do, you want to do one section, get it taped down and then take off, take them off so you can use it on other sections. And that way you don't have to have as much. So we're just gonna continue going down here, making sure that everything is taped down so it's not going to move on us. And this is coming along pretty darn good. And it's almost like using hand laid uh, snap track where you're building the components to your layout and then all you have to do is literally just connect them together. And it's a whole lot of fun. And this allows you to do some experimenting before things become permanent and make sure that your yards have proper clearance, your equipment can navigate through what you're doing. And it's better to change it in this planning stage than it is to change it after you spend all that time and putting it down. So now what we're gonna do again is let's just take a look. Here's what we've built so far. Here's our crossover right here. And I just popped out the space gauge. Let's put that, let's put that back. That looks good. So we have our double main line, we have a crossover, and then this is the siding that's going to lead into our yard and our ladder track. So the next piece that I'm going to use is this piece that I showed you earlier, where I extended the diverging route and used the fixture to continue to build straight track. And it's a neat little piece of equipment here. And if you're laying this out, when you're doing all of this and you're trying to figure out your spacing, what you wanna do, and let's move the camera down a little bit, so when you're trying to figure out your spacing to determine where you need to cut everything, do your yard spacing first, and that will dictate where you need to snip the turnout right here. So just take it slow and you'll be just fine. So now that we got this in place, 
that you can see right here, we're going to make sure that what we just put down is parallel with our other work. So we're gonna use another little sweep sticks and another little space gauge. And again, these space gauges are three for like $7. So they're inexpensive enough that you can have a bunch of them. And once you start using them, it's a pretty cool little tool to have. And then we're just gonna kind of go down the end right here and make sure that this is parallel to the track that we already put down. So let's bop a couple of these in place. I'm actually gonna use two right here just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And then let's go back over to the turnout right here. And again, I already cut these ahead of time so the demo would be nice and easy. But once you get your track spacing done with the yard leads, then you know where to cut. So what we're starting to do right here is actually build the start of our ladder track. And I'm just gonna take a little five inch sweep stick, pop that in place, and it's looking pretty good. So let's take another angle and see what we're doing. So look at that, you can see right here, here's the start of our ladder track, and we're actually gonna put two more tracks on it now, and you can see everything that we've done literally in the past 15 minutes is just that easy. And once you get in the habit of designing full size, I find it hard to go back to a computer screen. So once you get your, your track components built, it's very easy to just get them all together and start laying track out. So before we move on, let's tape down what, what we have done already so it's not going to move on us. So the next piece that I'm gonna put on is another one of these uh, turnout skeletons where I extended the flex track coming all the way, not flex track, the straight track coming off of the diverging route. So now that this is getting pretty big, let's refocus our camera and get all of this in the view. This is where having a big workspace certainly comes in handy. And we're gonna kind of do the same thing that we did before is we're gonna work on our track spacing here first. So we'll take another sweep stick and we're gonna pop that in place like what we had. And then we'll take some space gauges and put those in place. I always like using two. That way you know for sure when you put a little pressure on it that they're going to stay in line. And now what we'll do is we know our track spacing is where we need it to be. This is where right in here, you would trim your turnout so that way everything matches. And that's how you build a ladder track. There's no real secret to it. You just need to know exactly what you wanna do before you start and then get some components down and then just basically trim them to fit. So let's throw a few more pieces of tape down. So that way, everything that we're doing is secure. Let's pop that up for a second. And just one more right down in here. So now I'm gonna move the camera again and you can see everything that we've done so far, where here is our ladder track right here. And here's kind of a general overview of everything that we've put together in just a few minutes. It's a very interesting piece of track work right here. And it's pretty exciting. And I hope you're enjoying this and seeing just how easy it is to lay things out. So now we're going to
do this last piece and I'm going to take that section that I built in the turnout fixture using the opposite diverging track. And that literally goes right on the end here. Let's get this in line a little bit better. When all this COVID stuff is done, I'll have another camera person and this will go a whole lot easier. So now we're gonna finish our ladder track and use the piece that we soldered in the diverging side of the opposite turnout. And I'm just gonna throw some PC ties under here to get everything up to the same track level. So when you do this last piece of track or you build in the turnout fixture, uh, I have a couple PC ties down here, but then I just used some brass angle that I soldered to the top. So then once I go back and I actually solder PC ties to where I want them to be, then all I have to do is apply some heat to the top of these and they will pull right off. And then I can put wood ties down and they'll be good to go. So on this last little bit, we're just going to throw in another sweep stick and then we'll pop another one in right in here in the end and actually before we do that let's at least get a piece of tape in here I won't press it down until we get it fully positioned Slide that down just a little bit. And then we can take another space gauge. <clears throat> pop that into place. <clears throat> Let's tighten this down. That's looking pretty good. And believe it or not, we're done. So let's take a look again. Here's an overview of what we created in just a few minutes. So I want you to see that ladder track and see how great that ladder track looks. I'm trying to do this without the glare right here. And this piece of track is looking really nice. So now that we have everything taped down, just gonna put one more piece right here we can actually start taking all of this apart and then I'll show you what it looks like without everything. So you can see the great work that we did in literally just a few minutes. So on this one, I'm just gonna retape that piece down and throw on another piece right here. And then we're just going to go through and take everything off. Now that we don't have the sweep sticks acting as real joiners, we want to make sure that things don't move. That way, when you're building this on your layout, you can kind of trim everything as you go. And then fix it down so it's not going to move on you while you trim other sections. So we're just going to go take all of this apart and then take a look at what we've built. So we appreciate you tuning in today. And if you want to see more videos on track building uh, every week on the Fast Tracks Facebook page, I've been doing little video updates called Upstairs in the Workshop. And those are a little less formal than the clinics that we're doing today, where basically I'm just showing you cool stuff that I'm working on and show you some more tips and techniques on how to get more from your fixtures and make life easy. We're all about making life easy. And I can't tell you how easy all of this is right here with what we have done so far today. And I couldn't be more pleased with how it is turning out. My gosh, that looks absolutely awesome. Let me uh, throw one more piece of tape. Ugh. 
down here just to keep it from moving a little bit. And we'll take this out and here we go. Look at that. Look at everything that we built. I'll try to do this without the glare from the lights, but you can kind of see here's the ladder track coming down right here. And then on the end, here's that last part of the ladder track that we use in the diverging route in the fixture. So overall, just take a quick peek at that. And that looks pretty darn good. The lights are pretty bright. So I'll do my best to get them out of the light. So you can kind of see where we started. And here's our crossover right here that we did. So basically this track right here is a siding that the switcher can use to work the yard without following up the main line tracks that we have right here. So very quickly, that kind of shows you all the cool stuff that you can build with just a turnout fixture. It's not just for turnouts. You can actually build a big chunk of your layout with just this fixture. So hopefully what we want to do is give people inspiration to get something built, anything, get some trains running. If you have one of those cool proto throttles, you can easily build a switching layout uh, with just that turnout fixture. And again, go to the Fast Tracks uh, website, which is just handlaytrack.com, or you can just Google Fast Tracks and it'll come right up. And on the very top of the page, there is a button that says YouTube. You can click on that and it'll jump you right to our YouTube channel and you can watch how to build whatever uh, you need with all the products that we make. So you can take a look at that and you can just see how easy it is. And what you see on the videos is exactly what it's like in real life. There's no difference. We build things live and that's part of why we're doing all of this live is to just show you that there are no surprises it really is just that easy to get started and uh, build your own track and get some trains running right away and have really beautiful looking track that is going to last you for years to come. So that is what I wanted to kind of stress today with this clinic is just showing you some ideas and tips on what you can do to build your own layout, build a section of your layout. You don't need a whole lot to get started. So uh, a couple other things that I just want to throw out that are good tools to have, and then we'll open it up to questions to stay on track. A um, couple things that I like to do when I solder track is clean everything. And if you saw the last video, I said numerous times, if it's, if it's not shiny, don't solder it. So what I'll do is I'll use my Dremel tool with a wire wheel and I'll clean all the gunk that is on the rail. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's clean and it's solder ready. Just like you wouldn't paint a locomotive without cleaning it first, you wanna get all that gunk off of your rails. And once you hit it with a wire wheel, I like using the steel ones versus the, uh, the brass ones. They tend to last a whole lot longer. You get all that oxidation off and all the oils that were used to push the rail through the die, all of that comes off. The other thing that I'd highly recommend before you start soldering anything is just some 400 grit sandpaper. You can get this at hobby shops, at hardware stores, big box stores. It's fairly easy to find is sand your ties, sand your rail before you're ready to solder. And that's gonna give you a whole lot better solder joint. And what the sandpaper will actually do is etch the ties before you start. Just as an example, let's just do a live little demo here. Here's a brand new PC tie that I cut off the sprue this morning and it's fairly clean, but it's not solder ready clean. So once we take the 400 grit sandpaper, we can get all of that oxidation off and you would be amazed on how shiny it becomes. And that's the type of finish you want to have 
when you're soldering is a nice shiny finish you can't expect the flux to do everything so now that we sanded it it's nice and shiny and the sandpaper actually etched the copper a little bit which will allow the solder to settle into that copper and actually give your joint a little more bite and it'll become very strong as well so anything else just go back and watch the previous videos on the facebook page and if we have questions speed i'd be Ready happy some questions yeah i'd be happy to take some questions and uh help people out so what do we have first so several guys ask if that's a double crossover fixture uh no the fixture that i'm using excuse me is just a single is just a single turnout fixture so the double crossover fixture and i do have one of those and that's going to be the subject of another clinic coming up the double crossover fixtures are actually the most versatile fixtures that you can buy. And we sell them basically in halves. So if you don't want to buy both halves, you don't have to. But if you buy both halves and put them together, you can build parallel track. You can build a single crossover left and right all in place where what I did today, I just basically you know put together a left and right turnout and match them up. Uh, you can build your left and right turnouts. And the thing that I like most is you can build a single track diverging into parallel track in a double crossover fixture as well. You can right. build all of that with just a turnout fixture, but you can do it all in place with a double crossover fixture. So someone also asked, um, what if his track spacing is different? Well, that's the nice thing about these space gauges is they can move and they're adjustable. So what I showed you today, I left everything at the same track spacing just for the sake of the demonstration. But a lot of times yard track is a little tighter than mainline track. So what you can do is these little knobs here are actually your center lines. So you Thanks. can actually measure your center line between the two and they come off really easy. So then you can drop some wood glue down here and pop them together. And if you have this, what I would suggest doing is have some sections of track soldered up that you know is the right spacing and then pop in your sweep sticks. And then while the glue is still wet on these, put these in, make sure that everything is exactly the way you want, and then just hold it together for a second and let the glue set up. And then there was a few questions about do you put those turnouts back into the fixture to complete them? Yes, you can. So let's let's do a little example. Let's just pop. I'm just going to pop one of them off right here. So when you're done, you can see I didn't do the frog right here, and this turnout doesn't have any points. I did file the stock rails right here. So I did that beforehand because once you solder this piece on, it's a little difficult to solder it. But if you do forget that, which can happen, no big deal, you can unsolder this tie and then you can slide the stock rail tool that we sell back onto these and then file it off. So you can take this and after you handle it, you're gonna get oils from your fingertips on here. Take the sandpaper, sand everything off, get it nice and clean. And then what you can do is just pop that right back into your turnout template, and then you can finish putting in the points and then finish this part of the turnout right here. And that way you can take your planning skeletons and use them later for the railroad. Okay, so why didn't you complete the old turnout and then try to fit it on the bench? Um, I, always, I always like having a couple of these handy. I have probably two, three, four lefts and two, three, four rights. Only because while I like to, while I like to do my track planning, again, I like to do it full size. And if you don't put the guardrails in and you don't put the points in, that gives you a way uh -huh. the big sweep sticks and they basically will slide, they basically will slide through so you can adjust it 
however you want to. If you use a completed turnout where the guardrails are right here, the sweepsticks will basically stop right there. So oh, okay. Okay. that's just something that I do that I'm a traction modeler. So there's a lot of turnouts. There's a lot of tight ties or um, track spacing. And I want to see that if what I have in my head is actually going to work in real life. Okay. And now, now that you have, let's say you finish all your turnouts, do you, you put them back on this workbench of yours or do they go to, to the layout to be soldered together or do you solder them together in sections or just solder all of them together right there on the bench? Um, that's really up to you. And a uh, gentleman stopped by at our booth at train fest a couple of years ago and actually had a really great idea. Um, part of the fear of model railroading is doing something and then having to change it later. You know, we don't want to do that. And I think a lot of us have seen it where we build something, run it for a couple of years. And then after a while you go, yeah, this just isn't working for me. And what, he, what this gentleman actually suggested doing was actually soldering tacks onto the bottom of your PC ties. And then what he would do is um, take this, basically kind of press it into his road bed, see where those tacks were, drill a hole, and then he would basically drop the turnout in, and then he wouldn't solder the turnouts in place. He would. Oh, that's cool. On, he would solder a feeder to it, but he wouldn't actually solder the turnout. And he said, that way, when I decide a couple years later, I want to rip out that part of the railroad, I'm not losing all of the turnouts that I just built. Correct. Because when you have to take things apart, you end up damaging them. And, you know, you spent time and money making this turnout. So why do something that is going to risk damaging it? But on the other pieces, and I'm going to, again, take all of this apart, I soldered everything in place right here. And you can keep going on this rail for as long as you want to. And then once you know where the other turnout is going to be later on, you can then take this piece and then you can actually put it right into your turnout fixture, and I can actually build that turnout in place. Okay. So the answer really is whatever you want to do is fine. If you want to solder everything in place, that's up to you. If you don't want to solder it in place, you know, that's perfectly fine. Another question, do you use long ties on your crossovers? Uh, yes, I do. So um, if it's if I need a long tie on the crossover, that's not something that is normally stocked. Um, you can actually buy the same size lumber on the Mount Albert site, which you can order Mount Albert scale lumber and fast tracks products together. So I'll buy longer pieces that are the same size as a regular turnout tie. And then I'll just cut them to whatever size I need. And that seems to work pretty well. Okay, and then someone wanted to know about uh, 18th century American track. They understand that those ties were round. Yes. So <laughs> that's really interesting because there are a couple of guys on another Facebook page that I'm an admin on called Track Modeling and Detailing. Uh, when you look at early track work, not only 18th or early 19th century or later 19th century, early 20th century, uh, in a lot of those logging railroads, they actually, you know, they literally cut down trees, uh, chopped in the size, and then kind of, you know, made part of it straight and threw some rails down without tie plates. They literally just spiked them down. And I've seen some guys who have actually gone into the yard and now with springtime coming down, all the twigs are falling down off the, their, their trees. They've actually gone out and found twigs that are roughly the same size and they've cut them up and they've used them on their layout. So um, you can really do whatever you want to do. And on that same note, if you have, I'll pop a section off here. If you want to do something like that and you aren't using more modern ties, you can actually put this track down in the turnout fixture. Or if you have our three point track gauges, you can build it, you can put these in place, and then you can use whatever material you want for your ties underneath it. 
and you don't have to use PC ties. You can just get some track gauges like this to hold it in place and then spike down whatever material you want to use. One more question. Can yes. you do uh, clubs, uh, sorry, stub switches? Uh, you can, and there's, uh, I haven't done one personally, but there's a video on the Fast Tracks YouTube channel where Tim will actually walk you through how to build a stub turnout using the fixture. So there's just, it's basically the same thing. There are just a couple different steps that you need to follow. Cool. Well, Kevin, thank you very, very much for your time. You had yet again a whole bunch of people willing to do this now. All right. Thank you. We love, we love doing clinics and we appreciate you having us back. And uh, thank you again for Gordy, to Martin, to you, Speed, to Brad for donating your time and putting all this together for the NMRA. We're proud to be a part of it. We just want you to know we appreciate what you do and thank you very much. Thank you. We'll definitely see you soon again. <laughs>